Today we're going to start chapter 3, which is on linear systems of equations and matrices. And in section 3.1, we're going to talk about linear systems and how to solve them by graphing. So we talk about system of two linear equations in two variables, x and y. It's a system consisting of two equations that can be written in the form ax plus by equals c and dx plus ey equals f. Now notice, it just means that those equations are in standard form. We could also have those equations in slope-intercept form. Uh, if you're more comfortable graphing them, you could graph them in slope-intercept form as well. When we talk about the solution, the solution is the ordered pair x and y that satisfies each equation. So if I have a line that looks like this, all the points on that line are a solution to that equation. And if I have the blue line, all the points on this line are a solution to that equation. Well, there's only one point that satisfies both of these equations, and that is the point where they intersect. So that's what we're going to be looking for, that point of intersection. So when we solve a system graphically, we're going to graph the linear system and find the solution. So we're going to graph both of these and find the place where, or the ordered pair, where these two lines intersect. So if we use the cover-up method, the x-intercept is negative 2. The y-intercept, in this case, is 5. And we draw our line. Now, the more accurately you draw your line, the easier it is going to be to find that point. So now let's go to the bottom one. The x-intercept is going to be 6. And the y-intercept is going to be negative 3. And then I have to find the point where they cross. Well, it looks like it's going to be right there at negative 4, negative 5. But let's check. You always want to check to make sure that it is. So what we're going to do is we're going to plug that ordered pair into both of these equations. If it works, if it, then it's a solution. But it has to be a solution for each one. So we're going to have 5 times x is negative 4 minus 2 times y is negative 5 equals negative 10. So this is negative 20 plus 10 equals negative 10. So we have negative 10 equals negative 10. Works for that one. So let's try the other one. We're going to have 2 times negative 4 minus 4 times negative 5 equals 12. So we have negative 8 plus 20 equals 12. Negative 8 plus 20 is 12. So again, 12 equals 12. It works for both of them. So this is the solution to our system of equations. So the more accurate you draw your graph, the easier it is going to be to find that point of intersection. If your graph is sloppy, it might be hard for you to tell what point or where that they cross. So we have three guided practice questions here below. Um, why don't you take a couple of minutes to do one or two of those? Uh, I'll do all three of them, but you can go ahead and pause the video and hit play when you're ready to move on. And there are the answers to your guided practice questions. Notice in number one, the ordered pair is negative 2, 1. Number two, the ordered pair is negative 5, negative 2. And in number three, the ordered pair is 0, negative 8. Again, it's the point where they intersect. And I did plug those back in, and they all work. Next thing we're going to talk about is classifying systems. So we talk about a system of linear equations it's going to be consistent if that system has at least one solution. It's going to be inconsistent if it has no solutions. So no matter what, it has to be one of the, these two. Either it's consistent or it's inconsistent. Consistent means it has at least one. Inconsistent means there are none. So independent, then, is a consistent system that has exactly one. So if they, these two lines intersect, it's going to be consistent and independent. If they are um, the same line, then it's going to be dependent. It's going to have more than one solution. And then it, 
is I actually have an infinite number of solutions. So here are the situations that you have below. Uh, the number of solutions of a linear system. If there's exactly one solution, okay, looking back up here, it's going to be both consistent and independent. If it has infinitely many solutions, it's going to be consistent and dependent. And then if it has no solution, it's just inconsistent. So if we look at example two, it says we want to solve this one. And it says with many solutions. So we know right away that it's going to be consistent and dependent. Well, let's find this solution or find these graphs by, you know, doing the cover-up method. So if we take the y-intercept, it's negative 4. The x-intercept is 8, 6, which we can reduce to 4 thirds, which is really 1 and a third. All right, so now if we look at the bottom equation, the y-intercept is negative 4. The x-intercept is 4 thirds, which is 1 and a third. And so we notice that these two lines are on top of each other. Okay, so we know that it is consistent and dependent. The next thing we're going to look at is example three, and this one is solving a system with no solution. So if we jump up here without even graphing these, we know it's going to be no solution, so it's going to be an inconsistent one. But if we graph it, I, again, you could turn this into slope-intercept form if you wanted to. And if we did both of them, there would be our equations in slope-intercept form. Well, in slope-intercept form, we see that the slope here is 4. So both lines are going to be the same, but they have different y-intercepts, so automatically we know that these two lines are going to be parallel. But let's graph this first one, uh, 4x plus 5. So here's 5. The slope is 4. I'm going to go up 4 and over 1. So I'm going to also go the other way just because it's on my graph, down 4 and over 1. So there's my top one. Then the bottom one, negative 2 is my y-intercept, 4 is my slope. And so we notice that those two lines are parallel, which makes them inconsistent. So that's what the graphs of those two types of examples would look like. So the next thing we're going to look at is example four. And this is a standardized test practice. It says a soccer league offers two options for membership. Option A includes an initial fee of $40 and costs $5 per game. Option B costs $10 per game played. We want to know after how many games will the total cost of the two options be the same. So what we're going to do is we're going to write our two options, or our two equations. For option A, we know that it's going to be, includes an initial fee of $40 plus $5 per game. So I'm going to say Y equals $40 plus $5 per game. And option B, says it's going to be just $10 per game. So here are my two equations. So what we need to do is graph these. So we're going to do the first one in blue.
And well, let's go up by. Well, let's go by tens. Or fives, actually. All right, so we're going to start by graphing the top. Y intercepts at 40. It's right here. My slope is 5. That means I'm going to go up 5, so up 5 and over 1. So I went up 5 units and over 1 unit is right there. Up 5 units and over 1 unit, up 5 units and over 1. And I'm going to keep doing that. And what I'm going to do is now draw my line. Okay, there's my intercept. And there's my graph. The next one, I know I have, we'll do this one in black. Y intercept 0, and I'm going to go up 10 and over 1. And I'm going to draw my line there. Let's try that again at a point here that I missed. Let's go up 10 and over 1. Let's try drawing that again. And again, it looks like they're going to cross right about here. And that's at eight games. It looks like it'll cost eighty dollars. And we can check to see if that is actually true. If we plug in eight here, well, that's going to be eighty in the option B. If we plug in eight in here, five times eight is forty. Forty plus forty is eighty, so it'll be eighty in option B. So that is in fact where they cross. So the cost will be the same in C eight games. All right, so let's jump down to the guided practice. There are three questions there that you can go ahead and solve the systems. So go ahead and pause the video, and you can hit play when you're ready to move on. And here are the solutions for questions four, five, and six. Now notice number four, the solution is there's infinitely many solutions, which means it's consistent and dependent. Number five, there's no solution which means it's inconsistent. And number six, it is the solution negative one comma three is the ordered pair that is the only solution to this problem. So that is consistent and dependent. All right, then the last guided practice question is number seven. So go ahead and try number seven and you can hit uh, pause and then hit play when you're ready to move on. Right, so if we look at the guided practice for question number seven, we will see that the number of rides would increase to 24. That's the place where our two graphs would cross. And so if the monthly, if the price of the monthly pass increases to $36, then that is when we would have 24 solutions would be our answer. So in section 3.1, we're finding the number of solutions to linear systems of equations. So really what we're doing is graphing the equations and finding the place where they intersect, if they do intersect. If they intersect, they're going to be consistent and independent. If, they do, uh, if they're the same line, it's going to be consistent and dependent. And then if the lines are parallel, there'll be no solution, which means they're going to be inconsistent. So here is your assignment for section 1.3.1. It's on page 156. Also, after you're done with that uh, assignment, I would recommend 
looking at the graphing calculator activity on page 159. That'll give you some um, an idea how to use your graphing calculator with graphing systems of equations.